Hi everyone, this is Crystal with LP Design and Little Palettes. And today I wanna to show you a demo of the image I showed you for Flashback Mondays. So this is wood burning and watercolor on watercolor paper. So you can see the wrinkle of the paper. And if you look close, you can see the wood burning on there. Now, I love this because it is very natural. It isn't as dark as a Sharpie. And I'm gonna demonstrate it for you today. I'm gonna flip our camera down so you can see. So you can see that you can do it on wood as well, obviously, because it's a wood burning. Or on watercolor paper. Now I love the watercolor paper because it's nice and thick and it can take the wood burning tool. There are some things to keep in mind. Since it is on paper, you do need to be careful about how long you hold it on there because the heat can burn the paper and we really don't wanna do that. This wood burning tool I have had heating up for the last mm, four or five minutes and you wanna make sure it's nice and warm. Please don't touch it. I have a little stand here for it to sit on and I often suggest that if you decide that you wanna do a lot of these, I would have multiple wood burning tools because it is a little bit of a task to take off the tip here um, and switch it out. There are a variety of tips in my little thing here. I have several kits worth here. A lot of times wood burning tools are also soldering tools. So you have some flat ones, you have just a variety of different tools you can use with different purposes. Today I'm starting out with a rather patterned rounded tool and I love this tool because I like making the tree leaves out of it. As you can see I kind of did something similar with a different tool here which I will hopefully also demonstrate as well. Remember if this is hot please don't touch. This is the tool that I'm going to be switching it out for. So this should be warm enough. I always tend to have a piece of wood on the side just to play it on the safe side. And yes, it's warm enough. So up here in my tree, in the underneath part, I'm always gonna do it a little darker because it's a little more shady. So if you don't like how dark it is the first time, you just hold it on a little bit longer. And it's just an experience, an experiment. And I like to overlap mine. I like to create kind of a shadow effect. And then if I was to do some up here, See, if I let it warm up a little faster then, or a little longer, then it will be darker as well. So it's every time I touch it to the paper, it takes some of the heat away. As I said in my previous video, this is a rather lengthy process, but it's kind of a fun and unique process. I like it because it's repetitive. You do need to take some safety precautions. Like on my table, I have these pieces of wood and you can just get them at like Lowe's or Home Depot. And some of them will even cut them for you. They were nice enough to cut them for me. Because you definitely want to protect the surface of your table. You probably want to be in a somewhat ventilated area as well because as you do this there will become a bit of a scent. I'm using a pretty basic wood burning tool kit. Um, it just has an on off switch. Some of them have this, some of them don't. Some of them you can get more expensive ones as well and they'll have temperature regulators so you can adjust the heat if you want it hotter or if you want it cooler and you can do different things when your tool is hot or cool. I also tend to do outlines but of course I would use a more pointed tool for that. So if I come and look here, I have all of this is outlined with wood burning tool, a wood burning tool. So all of this, some of it fades a little bit, 
when you're doing the watercolor, um, it even kind of dusts off a little bit. So that's something to be aware of. So I'm gonna show you one trick that I learned. And you still wanna be really careful with this, but if you only have one wood burning tool and you wanna switch out your ends, if you take a pair of pliers and very carefully twist this off, you gotta make sure you're going the right way. It's also nice to have these pliers just in case your uh, ends get loose. Sometimes that happens. And so it's nice to have something that will tighten it up. Now I have taught this to my students. We always teach how to be cautious. If you're doing it with more than one person or even yourself, something to be aware of is that you're not getting the cord next to the tool. You really don't want that to happen. You don't want your cords to melt and burn. Now this is gonna take a little while. As I said, I always have the, one of these nifty little tools and I wanna be really careful of this tool, this end because it's hot. So just put that to the side and I can see if it's warm enough just by touching it. It does heat up pretty fast. Now you may notice that it's smoked. Well, that's because this area of the wood is very sappy and the sap will, it's harder to print on it, first of all. And another thing, it's gonna produce more smoke. So it's fine for having one of these little sample things, but you wanna be careful when, if you choose to do on wood, if it has a knot or has a lot more sap on it. So I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna add a different pattern to it. And I just love how this creates a nice texture feel. And I might come up here, and of course you can't really tell too much that this is a top of the tree, but when I go in and I outline it and I paint it, you'll be able to tell that a lot better. And the closer and more overlapping you have, will make it appear that it's shadowy. Now if I was to hold this on really tight, so you can see that it does some dents on the other side, that's fine. And if you prefer to stretch your watercolor paper, you can put this, like with this painting that I did, I stretched it after I put the wood burning on it. You can do that. It does tend to fade a little bit further. So otherwise, you can do it, stretch your paper first and put it on the board and staple it or however you adhere your paper down. It, you do want to consider that it is on a board and you don't want to leave it on there for too long. This is the same thing for if I was doing this on the wood. It makes a nice effect. You can kind of rock it if you feel like it's not getting very good on there. It looks really nice on the wood as well. Mm, I'm starting to smell. It smells like wood burning fire, like your fireplace or your camping. So that's also something to consider. If you don't want to smell like campfire, you may want to plan when you do this because it will kind of get into your clothes and your hair. And of course it washes out. And we're gonna switch out for one more tool. You can use a lot of different tools. Um, I like to use one with kind of a point when I'm doing the outline. There's a lot of different ones you can use. Trying to find it. Remember, you don't want to just, and everyone knows this, but it's just a safety reminder. You want to take off the tip very carefully. And then you want to be careful too, because I just twisted it. You see, I can, I'm twisting it back because otherwise my cord gets rather twisted. Now I could try and put this on just with my bare hands, but that's not really a very wise decision because as you saw, it does heat up really quickly. And you'll just have to see which kind of tip you like. 
which one you prefer for drawing your lines. And I'm pulling out my board again, always being aware of where your hands are. So we're gonna let that heat up a little bit. It may work, it may not, we'll see. So as you can see, I did sketch out my picture first. And then it's just a simple sketch because really you're gonna be coloring it over. Let's see if this is ready yet. And some of these tools won't work as well as others. Do I know why? Not really. This one may not heat up well enough. Being aware of these other tools that I have here. And as this heats up, this tip heats up, you want to be careful because it does loosen, as I said before. Another thing to be aware, see how I got my edge on there? Now, if you want to use the edge, you can do that too. But most of the time, you don't want to use it. I'm going to take this one out. It's not wanting to cooperate today. And it's just something to be aware. It's been a while since I've done this, so just bear with me here. This is a fun tool because, as you can see, it's rather leaf shaped. And if it's not straight it's kind of curved so if you wanted to use this something to keep in mind is if you go straight down it's not going to print very well but if you rock it then it'll create a nice leaf shape which is also nice if you're doing a tree you can do that as well you can also use the tip of this to draw out your tree If you make a mistake it's okay as I tell my students and myself make it work for you nobody knows where that line was drawn so it just becomes thicker and more interesting so I said some of them for some reason will heat up a little faster than others Perhaps the other one was more of a soldering tool, so it may have a different effect. It's something that you just can experiment with. If you don't want to experiment on your art piece, then experiment on your little board. That's what it's there for. You can play with it, you can see how it'll work. Really, a lot of art is experimenting. So there's my little sample. And then, of course, when I'm all done with this, I'm going to watercolor it. I hope you enjoyed my demo for you. Um, and I hope that you can enjoy this. You can find wood burning tools at craft supply stores. I think I got this one at Walmart. I've got others at craft supply stores. The nice thing about the ones at the craft supply stores is sometimes they'll come in a larger kit like this. I find that they range depending on the craft supply store is between 25 and 55 dollars so it really depends on how they choose to price it you can of course find it online as well so i hope this was helpful and um have fun wood burning and watercolor all right guys i'm signing off see you later